Hello everyone and welcome back to Hemeldown Model Railway. So today's video is just a little bit of an update on some of the progress that's been happening so far. I've finally got a little bit of time off so I've been up here continuing to sort out some of the scenic work and what I've been doing is sorting out all of the hillsides I've ordered 16 rolls of the plaster bandage and I've just been going over all of the sections that you see in front of you. I have finished off this uh, little section here and where the coal yard will be and the coal merchants I've started to plaster bandage some of this bit. And then also where you can see this truck is, I've started to make a little bit of a hillside just where a road has been cut out. And if I just bring you down, I can show you just where that kind of goes into. So as you can see, it's just like a little walling track just so that lorries and stuff can come up through into this section here. What I've done with some of these edges is I've cut them back just using a knife just to give a smoother surface so when it comes off to here and then when you put plaster bandage over it you can stretch those out even more so it just gives that smooth transition between this board and then going up onto a slightly higher level. Let me take you down to the river section and show you what's happening with that bit. So this is the river section here. And what I've done is I've plaster bandaged a very flat surface on here and made that nice and smooth. That's gonna form my road on here. And then this edge here, I'm gonna use some embossed brick to build up like a retaining wall for the river. And this, as you can see with the river here, I've sort of uh, built up some sort of banks and some shapes of the river. Now I'm gonna plaster and seal um, this baseboard here, but I just kind of at the moment wanted to get the shape and textures in. And I did the same with the road section and just took a little bit off the edge just so that it kind of slopes more rather than looking like straight edge. So this is the slightly higher view of this section here. And what I've done is try to blend it in seamlessly with the section that I've already painted up in brown up the top there. I did have my windmill kind of up in this corner here, but I've decided that I'm gonna move it back into the far corner over on this side, just so that you've got, when you're looking down, you'll just see it's like cliffs and stuff on that side. And then if I was to do any shots from this side, you'll see it's like a, more of a farm and stuff. So having some bushes and trees throughout these sections here, just to kind of break it up a little bit, just so that it doesn't look all plain green. Just kind of want to give it some, some sort of depth and stuff as well. I thought I'd just bring you over to this section here. And what I've been doing is using a little bit of filler just to kind of plug any gaps and start to make the embankments and then also to join these pieces all around in this edge here. And I've still got a little bit more to do, but what I've been using is some stuff that I found online. And it's only three pounds a pot, one strike filler. So it's dry in 30 minutes. Um, and it's really like sort of lightweight sort of stuff um, and what I do is when it gets to about sort of 20 minutes of drying I then just dabbing in the end of my finger and 
sort of, if I can show you, sort of building a little bit of texture, just so that when I do paint it up, the um, the colours should sort of uh, have some little recesses where it'll catch a little bit darker and things like that as well. So I've now sorted out some of my lighting so it's a little bit more brighter over here on this section and it's not casting so much of a shadow. I'll just kind of pan you around a little bit so you can see some of the work that's going on from different angles. And what I have done up in the background there, so I've uh, plaster bandaged the second part of the viaduct, so all of that bit in the bottom there, that's all been complete now, so that now stretches all of the hillside down to where the second carriage is on that loco. So that's starting to take some shape. What I need to do next is really start getting some of that track down there in the middle where the blue coronation class is. I need to get those two lines fixed in so that then I can start blending in a little bit more of those back seams. So as you can see, there's quite an edge there. I want to have that all filled and sloped so it's sort of bringing it up into the hillside there. So I can't really make any more progress with that bit at the back there at the moment until I start getting some of the track laid in that section. So it might only seem like there's a little bit of progress, but it takes quite a bit of time getting all of this uh, plaster bandage down. Just having a little bit of a running session of the, the Q6 again, just while I'm filming this and been doing some of the scenic work. I've just had a little loco running around in the background. So what I've been doing is sitting down kind of this corner here and then I'm looking down at the trains and stuff just to kind of see if I need to build it up anymore and how much of like the locos and stuff I can see. So kind of just taking my time with it and just seeing if the angles look right and stuff. I'm quite happy with how it's looking so far. It's quite nice to have a little bit more lighting up here in the loft. You can see now if I pan you around, those buildings are a lot more lit up than what they used to be. Um, so yeah, I've made it a little bit more brighter up here, which is quite nice. Some nice energy saving bulbs, just on the bright white settings. It just means that oh, with my camera settings and stuff, I don't have to uh, sort of trying to uh, have any of the flash on or having to adjust any settings when I'm editing the video. Uh, hopefully these are all coming out quite nicely. So this is the only issue with working with polystyrene. You end up with such a mess everywhere. To think that I had hoovered all this floor and everything to make it dust free after the mess of the roof and now I've gone and made an absolute state again but uh, 
all these sort of scrap pieces here and stuff I will be using up to form sort of edges and hillsides and bits and pieces so only the very small stuff I'm going to kind of clear up and everything else I'm just going to bag it up and use it in the future it always comes in handy and then looking over the other side you can see that I've ended up just getting locos out and not putting them back in boxes um, so I need to take a little bit more care and sort out some storage solutions for the layout so what I'm thinking of uh, so what I'm thinking of doing is sorting out my other half of the board so that then I can put a temporary sort of engine shed stroke fiddle yard on the other side and then I can actually have them out on display rather than them all sat in boxes and now with hopefully the extreme weather gone it will be safe enough to have them up here so my next big project will be to finally get these uh, two tracks sorted out on the middle section I keep putting it off and ended up getting stuck into quite a bit of scenic work but I just kind of wanted to get this nice and solid in place and how I'm looking and how I want it to look and then I will build the other tracks around it so I'm hoping for the next update I should be able to have my second loop in now I'm going to run the HM6000 on the second loop just temporarily while I'm waiting to sort out it to DCC. It just means then I can have a couple of locos running around. But I'll still do all the pre rot wiring ready and then I can attach all the droppers eventually once I sort out the bus wire. Now I've got a couple of little things that uh, I'm going to show you in two separate videos for next week. You've probably spotted throughout this video one of the things that I had planned. I'm not going to mention it now so that I'll save that for a video um, but once the video comes out you'll probably then realise what I've been talking about. The second one will be um, a ratio kit build. I kind of want to get this uh, This building put in so the coal merchants I kind of want to put, put it in here and then see what size it works out and then I can build that last little bit with the plaster bandage um, I've kind of left it for now in case I need to cut it out a little bit further and just take it back a bit more um, and then lessen the slope gradient going up to it as well So today is Saturday and I haven't really done any other work on the layout, all I've been doing is just doing all of this plaster bandage section with the rivers and the hillsides and a bit on the viaduct. So this is only day one of three days of being able to do anything up in the loft, but obviously with with anything you have to leave this stuff 24 hours to dry so whilst this is all drying and stuff I'm gonna edit this part of the video and then start making some of my other videos that I've got planned for next week just want to quickly say that I hope you can join me on the live stream this evening that'll be from 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock if you can't make it, 
hopefully you will be able to get to see some of it on the catch up. Just going to be a small running session and just a little bit of general chit chat. Right, so that's enough of me waffling on again. Just wanted to keep this video quite short and just give you a quick update of what I've been doing so far. Looking forward to the next few days of being able to get some of this painted up once it's dry. And then next week I will be getting on with the track work. And then this section will really start to take shape. And then I'll be able to add in a lot more of the kind of detailed stuff as well. So thanks for watching everyone. Thank you so much for your support and welcome to any new subscribers that have joined me recently. Bye for now.